I have a Sony model XBR55X850D and it's having a HDMI no signal fault. I currently have a Fire Stick plugged into HDMI 4 and it's showing no signal, it's not detecting the device. When I bring up the inputs, typically over here, we're supposed to have a little symbol indicating it is detecting a device is plugged in and that's not the case right now, even though the device is plugged in. Now that we've removed the back cover, we can tell there's not actually much going on aside from the main board. We're gonna be focusing on that circuit board and more specifically on the HDMI processor located right there. So let's go ahead and remove it out of the TV and take a look at it under the microscope. So we have our HDMI ports two, three, and four on the side. And as you can tell, we have these traces here that go directly from the HDMI all the way to the HDMI processor. So this HDMI processor, which is made by Silicon Image, is most likely our fault, and we're gonna be checking some of the caps around it for shorts. So the reason we do that is because if the caps around it are shorted, it means that actually the chip is the, the real fault, the real short. So for example, looking at this resistor right here, we are getting a beep, which indicates a short or a resistance lower than 50. So this one is in the mega ohms, so we don't have a short on those lines here. That one's 31 ohms, which is also a little bit on the low side, but it's actually not too bad. That could be considered with intolerance. This one's 30 ohms. Like I said, we're supposed to be seeing about 40 to 50. And 30, 1.35, 45 kilo ohms. So those are actually good. 33. I was expecting a lot more shorts. There's like no shorts. There's literally only one so far out of the six caps I've checked. And this one over here is showing us 30, 30. Right. So it looks like only a small portion of the chip is shorted. We just checked a lot of those capacitors and most of them are actually testing more or less with intolerance, although 30 ohms is a little bit on the low side, that's definitely suspicious. Uh, but that 10, 15 ohms over here on those two, that's definitely too low. So to me, that is an indicator that the silicon image has shorted and needs to be replaced. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start off by adding some flux to all of the pins here. I have it currently on a bottom heater to add some heat, of course, from the bottom. Um, the reason for it is there's a large ground pad in the center below that chip. And I'm going to be using, because of that, my hot air to remove it. So I'm using about 375 degrees Celsius, and we're going to be doing about 20 or 30 seconds of hot air. Okay, I'm starting to prod and lift it slowly, getting heat on all my corners here. There we go. It's a lot of smoke from the flux. So if you have it available, I highly recommend using a fume extractor. And I don't know if you saw it, but I did accidentally knock a capacitor right here. So we're gonna have to readjust that. So ideally I should have probably attacked it from this side because there are fewer capacitors, smaller chance for a mistake on that corner. And now while I still have a good amount of heat, I'm going to be using my desolder wig to remove all of the excess solder left over on the pads. And I just actually just cut off a small piece instead of using the whole roll. It'll make it a little easier for me here. And then because I'm left-handed, I'm just rotating the board 90 degrees to do this last side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little cleanup, remove a lot of that old flux that's burnt up, and we're gonna put some new flux here in a second. And if you forgot to check the orientation, there should be clues left on the board. So for example, the, the, the chip, chip is gonna be marked with a little dot over here, and the board itself will also have a little dot down over here. So I'm just putting some solder paste on our ground plane over here. And what this solder paste is, is essentially just tiny, tiny little solder balls kind of mixed in with some flux. And that'll allow us to solder the bottom ground pad to the board. And we're gonna put our chip down. So now this is gonna be a little bit more uh, in-depth micro soldering, so we're gonna change cameras. Before I use my hot air to solder this down, I want to make sure it is perfectly lined up. Spending an extra five minutes making sure it's properly lined up will save 20 minutes of hassle down the line. So one thing I'm looking at here is this side is not lined up correctly. The bottom is, 
but the uh, the left and right side are not. It's a little it's sitting a little high, so we're gonna slide it down just a smidge. I'm going very slow, and I think that looks good. So it is exactly where I want it. And one more thing I'm gonna do here is just tack down a couple of the corners or a couple of the pins. And the way I wanna do it is I wanna add solder to my iron and I want to solder it down without the iron actually making contact. So what I mean by without actually making contact is I'm putting a big blob of solder on my iron tip and I want that solder blob to touch the pins and the board, but I don't want the actual iron to touch the pins or the board because if it does, I'll cause it to move. There we go, perfect. So essentially the, the blob of solder I have is an extension of my iron. Oh, the whole board moved, not the chip, so that's okay. Now that we have it kind of tacked down a little bit, I'm gonna add flux just on those little spots. I'm not gonna add flux to the whole chip yet. We've been preheating the board for a few minutes now, so let's go ahead and hit it with some hot air. And I'm gonna be focusing my heat on the center of the chip for the most part, because that is the ground pad we're trying to solder right now. And we can see our solder is melting on the sides here. So that would be an indicator that we're getting pretty close to that temperature. The ground pad always takes a little bit more of heat, a little more heat. So we're gonna do a few more seconds. Actually, one more thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the opportunity right here. I'm gonna move that over. We're gonna try to double dip on what we do here. We need to fix these two caps. So we have this one here, right there. And finally, we're gonna to get to the pins. So let's go ahead and put some flux on those now, starting with just this side. And we're gonna start by brushing some of that solder over. And we have a couple bridges left over. I'm gonna try and fix. There we go. And we have one more over here. Move it around a little bit. There we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. We'll come back to it and do a check later. Let's rotate the board over. And while we're here on this corner, we'll add a little solder here. That is much more than I wanted. And while we're at it, we're just gonna add flux everywhere. See if we can remove a little bit of that excess. There we go. All right, that should be good for now. So same thing, I'm gonna try and bring this solder over. It is giving me a little bit of a harder time than the other side was. I'm not sure exactly why. Let's try a little more flux. Oh, you know what? I know why. I turned my bottom heater off a little earlier, so I have less assist, and heat transfer is key to all soldering. And I don't know if you can tell, let's zoom in a little more, but I'm getting solder on the pins, however, it's not connecting to the pad. So the solder is, I mean, I can see the shiny solder on the pin, but the pad is that still very dull. So I'm having to like push the pins down to kind of force that contact. So I don't know if maybe some of the pins on my chip are bent or if the uh, board is just not flush and it's warping a little bit from the heat, which can happen but uh, I had to physically push down on some of those pins to make that proper contact. That does look good now. Let's rotate one more time. We have two more sides. So this side I did not have any solder, so we'll have to add all fresh solder. We'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll start on one edge.
So to help make that better contact, I'm gonna be pressing down on the chip a little bit as I'm going over it with the iron. Hopefully that'll make it easier to get that good proper bond with the solder between the, the chips pins and the actual pads on the board. Yeah, and I think that's actually helping quite a bit. But I don't have quite enough solder. I'll have to add just a tiny little more. Hopefully that's enough. That's definitely a tiny bit. So we're gonna do a, a check with the dental tool on every single pin on all sides at the end. All right, our final side now. I'm just trying to spread it out a little bit here. When I flow and I go this way, I glide over the pins and I will not bend or hit any of them. If I go this way, my tip could actually get caught on one of the pins and bend it. Um, so going this way is actually very dangerous because if you solder a pin down bent, it can be very difficult to correct. All right, we're gonna use the, this technique again. Oh, I just did it again, went the other way. So when I'm doing my little circles, this is okay because I'm actually going this way, not on the pins, then bring it back. This is essentially what I'm doing. We'll do a quick clean, just so it's easier to see what's going on. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our little scrape with the dental tool on each pin to make sure everything is properly soldered in. So if any of the pins bend right now, that means they're not soldered in properly and we're gonna have to redo it. Good. Also good. And our final side, which I think this was the one that I was slightly questioning. And also good. All right, so we can go ahead and put it back in the TV. But before, I'm gonna do one last pass with the hot air just over those caps. Um, I technically don't need to. They're fine as is, but they are bent. And I don't know, I just wanna make sure that there's 100% for sure good contact on these. I'm semi-questioning this side a little bit of that smaller cap. Okay, and it looks like we got good flow, so we're all set there. We've installed the main board back into the TV. We already have the fire stick plugged into HDMI port number four. So now we're just waiting for it to load up. And it's detecting fire TV stick, HDMI four. So that's a good sign. And we did not detect your remote, sure. All right, so we're getting the audio, we're getting the proper video. So we're all set, it looks like we have a proper repair. If you enjoyed the content, if you found it helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.